like to call uh, to order the Brown County Board of Education regular meeting, May 2nd, 2023. Uh, Mr. Moody, would you lead us in prayer, please? Or, or Mr. Moody, here. Oh, there. Good rest, all. We get to famous time this day. Your grace, Lord, that Jesus came and died and rose for our sins. Uh, Lord, I just pray that you'll be with the, with the board today as they make decisions to in our school, Lord. We just thank you for that opportunity to, to be able to work with children as a job each and every day. Lord, I pray for their safety, physically, mentally, and spiritually. Lord. I just pray that you be with our teachers, our staff. Lord, and uh, whatever we do, Lord, help us keep our minds focused on you and helping these kids. Thank you for all you've done for us, Lord. You're the best. It's my prayer. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda for today? Do I have a second? All in favor? Any opposed? Do I have a motion to uh, to approve the April 4th, 2023 minutes? I make a motion to approve the minutes. Do I have a second? I second. All in favor? Any opposed? Mr. Moody, did anybody sign up for public comment? Here? No, sir, they did not. Okay. Do I have a motion to close public comment period? I make a motion to close public comment. Do I have a second? I'll second that. All in favor? Any opposed? Okay, reports and discussion items, uh, administrator updates. Uh, Mr. Long? Uh, yes, would, sir. Would you uh, go ahead and be first? Okay, I appreciate the uh, uh, school board. Good morning to everybody, uh, Superintendent. Uh, uh, the uh, Indian Park Committee wanted to request at this meeting or to be on the agenda, and uh, we have some new members, and uh, they are trying to re reorganize the uh, Indian Park Committee, and they're working uh, on updating their bylaws. And I just like to bring uh, let them introduce themselves to you. They, uh, these are the officers. Uh, the ch uh, chairman, vice chairman, and the treasurer uh, for that committee. And, uh, and I'd just like to take the time to introduce them to the school board. Okay. okay. Good morning. My name is Margaret Tisakeski. I go by Mac. Uh, I'm a member of the education supervisor. I'll, I'm the chairperson this time. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Zach particularly, everybody knows me by my hair. I'm the supervisor at the Snowboard Youth Center, and I'm the last chair. My name is Theresa Askew, and I am an administrative assistant at the Snowboard with the Help and Housing Program, and I'm the secretary of the Okay, stand, uh, stay standing, Theresa, if you would. Uh, you're uh, on the agenda. Can, can you go ahead and tell us? Uh, Go ahead and tell us that, what you wanted to... I think that was maybe... That was maybe, yeah, it was maybe for just to introduce on who we oh, are. I don't know if Mag or who, if, if the rest of you want to do it, but just talk a little bit about what y'all do, and, and some of us sit on the committee as well, and there's school and student representatives, and maybe talk a little bit about what y'all do to accomplish. Well, um, since I'm chairperson, Next school year, we're hoping to get our meetings back more regular for updating our bylaws. We have a couple of positions, our membership positions to fill. Our goal is to have better communication between the parents and the school system and to keep in touch with the students that need help and try to get them up to par because I think everybody's kind of behind due to COVID. So uh, we're just trying to get started again and hopefully have a good school year. And, we're here for the kids just as much as you all are. And we hope to have a good communication between each other, as well as with the parents. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you. Okay. Ms. Sawyer, what do you got for us? 
I don't have a whole lot for sure. you. Um, things are really busy at the high school, but it's just our normal end of year activities. We're getting ready for testing. We'll start with that on May 22nd. Um, coming up this Thursday, we are having a senior celebration day at the high school for all of our seniors. Um, it's a fun day for them to celebrate their decision after high school, whether that's a college or university or joining the workforce, military. It's just a fun day to celebrate them and their accomplishments. So that's Thursday. Um, we also are going to be recognizing our senior baseball and softball players tonight. It is their senior day game. Um, and after the game, there's going to be a low country bowl and burgers for all the families and fans. And it's just going to be a good celebration. Um, prom is this Saturday. So we're getting ready for that. Really busy around the high school this week. Prepared for that. Um, our banquets we have coming up. We have the, um, the academic banquet on May 16th and the athletic banquet on May 22nd. So those are coming up. And... They're both at six o'clock. They correct? are both at six o'clock. Yes. Okay. And if you plan to attend those and you have not told Miss Klein, you need to do that today in order to have a seat at the table. Yes. She she has Miss Klein has requested we stick around after the meeting so she can uh, uh, make a list of who's coming and who's not. <clears throat> Thank you. Go ahead. That's all that I have on my list. And I have some field trips whenever you're ready for that. Okay, okay that's next. Okay. Okay, uh, the elementary school. I see Jamie. Is anybody here to represent her? No, there's nobody. There. <laughs> no one here to represent her. All right, right, that's fine. Shit. And <laughs> this Walsh. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Uh, same as the high school, it's getting testing time, so we are extremely busy and lots of things happening. Uh, we have a group of students uh, from all of our STEM classes that went to App State last week for a STEM day and they were able to participate in various hands-on activities. They got to sit in on a physics class um, and the students have been very excited about talking about they got to hold a human brain. Uh, so it was a really good experience for, for the kids that got to go. Um, the eighth grade trip was a, a success. Kids were well behaved. They had a great time. Uh, their favorite part was they spent the night at the Great Wolf Lodge in Charlotte and got to use the water park. Uh, and they talked a lot about the sand dunes, and so they had a really good time. Uh, we took the students that were unable to go on the trip. They did a lot of fun activities through the week, and then we treated them to bowling and pizza one, one day. So they were uh, got to be entertained, too. So. Uh, we are celebrating teacher appreciation this week uh, at the middle school, so we are have you know fun things planned for our teachers all week. So uh, we're happy to do that. Our teachers work very hard, and uh, so we're we're glad that we can do something small for them. Uh, seventh grade math has been working hard on geometry units. Uh, they've been talking about triangles and uh, different types of angles. And the students have adjusted really well to the teaching change with Mr. Cape being there. Um, and he feels like that they're really improving in their mathematical performance. So uh, things are going well with the math. And again, I want to, to brag on Crystal White, who's been in there and, and really helped him. Uh, Lynn Lynn also joined our staff after Christmas. Uh, she is doing a fantastic job in our uh, CTE classroom. She's working with the teachers, doing a lot of cross-curricular type activities. Uh, she's been in a lot of math skills uh, to help prepare kids for testing with cooking and measuring and, and all those things and sewing and, uh, you know, me measuring, doing angles. And uh, she has also been working with our social studies class. Uh, she has been cooking food from like the Holocaust, uh, German food from World War II. Uh, and then this week they're, they're celebrating Cinco de Mayo and so they've been doing some Hispanic food as well. So she's doing a great job working with teachers. Uh, May 12th, uh, we'll be having our Spring Fling Dance, which is our uh, end of the year dance for students. Uh, and we started last year, so we, we didn't want kids to have to buy big dresses and stuff, so we call it a hoedown, and they wear just their jeans and boots, and, and that was lots of fun last year. Uh, Discovery students through Western Carolina University, they went last week for their overnight camping trip. 
uh, Joanne Knott accompanied them. Kids had a great time. I don't know why, but it always it seems like when they go, it's either cold or it rains. So uh, it rained on them a little bit, but they still got to canoe and fish and hike and uh, just had a great time. So that was a great trip. Field day for the middle school is scheduled for May 15th. And then we start our EOGs on May 17th. Uh, students have organized dodgeball teams and we'll be having a dodgeball tournament on May 22nd and 23rd. And then we'll have our last reward day on uh, May 25th. Uh, we have several people in the community and businesses that have donated money for us to buy incentives to encourage kids to do well on their EOGs. Um, so kids will be awarded tickets for various things and go in drawings for some of the prizes. Um, we got that idea from the elementary school, so uh, we're, we were glad to be able to do that. And we'll also be recognizing students for perfect attendance, honor roll, good behavior, those kind of things. So uh, our track team at the conference track meet last week, week before last, they finished second in the conference. They've had a very successful season. Um, girls softball is still doing excellent, but the way the bylaws uh, Read. I don't think they're going to get to play in the tournament because it divides up into an East Division and a West Division. Uh, but they, uh, I went over and watched them yesterday at Hazel, and they beat Hazel 14 to two. Uh, if you've not seen them play, there's two more opportunities for home games on Wednesday and Friday, and those little girls are awesome. Um, little boys uh, team, they are struggling a little bit, but they've come a long way. So hopefully, uh, we're really building the baseball team. So hopefully, we'll see some progress. It. What grade is the, um, or for the, the dance, the spring flame? Sixth, seventh, and eighth. Oh, okay. So we try to do it outside in like the courtyard if the weather permits. Oh, so. okay. You mentioned, and I smiled when you said this, See, you don't have to stand okay. up, uh, about holding the brain. Yes. But when I was teaching, I had kids see a, a, a cancer or a smoker's lung. And they actually saw it. Uh, Leticia's shaking her head, so she was one of them and saw it. I don't know about America, but she saw that. It was a female lung, and it was black. Yeah, they enjoyed that. They talked about it. I do have the elementary updates if you want me to. Yes. Oh, nice. <laughs> Shelly, okay. All right. So, um, the elementary school had a very successful Charleston trip uh, this past um, first of April. Everyone had a great time on it. Um, a parent meeting for next year's trip with the fourth graders have already occurred, and we have already had people start signing up for that trip for next year. This past Thursday on April 27th was kindergarten registration, and 72 students have registered for kindergarten for the next school year. Cool. And we also expect for some more kids to sign up as well. Um, the, Sun the Sunshine Committee hosted the father-daughter dance at the high school this past Saturday. Um, and from the pictures, it looked like everybody had a great time with that. We at the elementary school have been doing an EOG Academy uh, for third through fifth grade uh, where students get extra EOG help. Uh, we are having approximately 25 to 35 students take advantage of this opportunity. And the EOG breakfast blast off for parents will be held Tuesday, May 9th at the RES cafeteria from 9.30 to 10.30. Parents will be given information on the state criteria to score a three, four, or five in each subject and information will be provided for parents uh, to understand at the meeting at meeting and exceeding growth for the school year for each of those tests. RES has a field day scheduled for May 11th with a rain day being May 10th. And we will begin EOG testing at the elementary school on May 15th. And RES is presenting uh, to the board multiple teacher assistants to hire for next school year. Teacher positions will be posted soon. The number of positions will depend on class size and current employees possibly moving to other positions within the school system. And we hope to hire for teacher positions at the June meeting. That's it. Thank you. Uh -huh. That's the first time uh, Ms. Shea Barber Mullen actually, you know her. Okay. Uh -huh. Just, uh, she's, she's, uh, 
one of my former students. <laughs> All right. Um, Sonny, do you have anything for us? I would just share that we took um, 16 of our noble knights to Whisper Mountain um, on Friday and then again on Saturday, and it was amazing. They all got some really good team uh, skills, and then we um, ate some meals together and just got to spend a lot of time up there and really debrief and, and calm down for this it's last couple of weeks. It is wonderful. <coughs> I know now why all the kids want to go. <laughs> Thank you. What's the normal life? That's um, our program that we have for our kids who were um, recommended or selected by their peers as being somebody who is trustworthy and easy to talk to. Good morning. Um, I just have some numbers to share with you. Um, as always, I try to equip you with um, our social work counseling and um, nurse numbers to do your packet of information for the month of April. And I do remember those ones. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you did when I saw you not. So, um, unfortunately, um, we have had some situations that have required a lot of attention from um, those skilled people that we have on our team, our nurses, counselors, and social workers, and I'll tell their uh, efforts the month of April. You can see through your reports we had a handful of crises that we responded to very appropriately. And I know that I try to brag on this team as often and as frequently as I can. Um, they are an amazing uh, group of individuals who devote every single day to building up the lives of students. And I think you'll see that in that report. Don't have any questions for me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this movie, do you have anything for us? Not this movie. Right. Or this movie. This movie. Well, she, I will like to pray in just a moment. Okay. This movie just had a uh, state review with the Child Nutrition Department. And uh, we've not got the official report back, but as we had the exit review, she had an excellent uh, administrative review visit. And they were doing me a nice thing that she could that was said about our child nutrition program and she has uh, virtually nothing to do with corrective action. So I thought that was a great visit. That's the best with how hard she works and the people that work with her um, to make the child nutrition program work for her children. Thank you. Ms. Park, do you have anything for me? Um, not much. We're just wrapping up the school year and we're trying to plan for summer um, with our new budget that Lester's going to be presenting. We did have a literacy night in April and we're hosting our Pinewood Derby this week. So that's it. Thank you. Yes. Why do you have anything for us? You're not on the agenda, so. Uh, just testing full steam ahead. Uh, as you've heard from several of the principals there, testing's coming up pretty soon, I believe. We have eight instructional days before the testing set or testing window opens. It doesn't necessarily mean that's the day they're going to start testing, but that's when they can start testing. So about every minute of my day right now is devoted to making sure that accommodations are flowing through right and uh, into the testing system and stuff. So it's just full speed ahead on EOGs and EOCs. Thank you. Mr. Moody, do you have any security updates? No, the one issue we're constantly have to look at is, especially last month, is the, uh, so you know, there's a lot of foot traffic in town. And there's been several cases where foot, foot traffic has ended up on our elementary campus because there's just no way to secure it the way it's laid out. So, uh, both you can correct me from, but if I'm not mistaken, over the last few months, we've had, we've had to arrest some, we've had to ban some. So that's, that's one issue we're really trying to figure out how to get a grip on, uh, which I'm not sure if we can in short of a new school. But, but uh, anyway, it's, it's, it can be uh, scary sometimes, some of those people get out our kids, so we're, we're trying to ask how much, so, how much signage do we have around <coughs> campus? We've got about everywhere, don't we? I mean, That's most of the All the buildings, I know, but I yeah. mean. On the perimeter. Uh, at, my, at the most, the entry left points there are, but you can come on campus anywhere. I right. mean, you'd have to have one continual sign all the way around, yeah, you true. know, so. The uh, biggest problem is the Lord's Gym parking lot. Or we have a free school. 
you know, but it's, you know, they don't read the signs anyway. I mean, signs are not really good. Okay, well, I know it's good. But if they don't do it, you need to check into the office. One thing we are going to do, too, we're going to connect the fence, our little playground. We've had some issues down there, too. People come there after hours. And uh, we're going to try to connect the fence to the bank to keep people off of it uh, outside of school hours. And it's really sad, Miss Miss Mike, it, 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 we talked about this, that you know, you have some families that like to use it. At the same time, we're having other issues of people with drugs, or we can make kids go there and use the, people use the bathroom after hours and have to deal with it the next day. So we're going to try to start lower that fence out there to where we can block people off outside school hours and we're going to post it you know we're going to start to trespass, charge people trespassing you know uh, which is unfortunate but we're going to try to keep our kids safe I mean, is there any way around that around that uh, um, playground down there that we can put if we're going to Fence it. There is a fence, correct? Yeah, but it's the before the road. The road goes in from the bottom. It goes. It goes to the football field. That is where most people come in. We're going to take the upper fence at the top of the hill and bring it to the bottom of the hill because we have parents or people, not parents, but people parking two hours before school's out. So we're going to bring that down to one security, and then we're going to put a fence from the baseball field, right, Kevin, up to the hill. I mean, people can still scale it or whatever there and work a little harder. But we're going to put one from there up there so we sort of double, double fence for people. And then we're going to close it. For and I do know we've darkened the windows. Yes. Uh, uh, thanks to Safe Schools Grant, and then Miss Knight has also found money. We are starting to, uh, the shades are horrible in the schools. They're just about non functional and they're just nasty. But we're taking sections at a time to put 10 up, and that's one thing we've got all our openings tinted. Uh, we're trying to do the sex at a time where people can't look in the buildings, you know, especially for school safety. One thing is uh, if, if they can't see kids, they can either gawk at them, you know, if it's any type of pressure, or uh, heaven forbid, a shooter comes in. They can only shoot what they see. So, And, and they're, they're going to be energy efficient and they're cheaper. So it's, and teachers seem to really like them, but understand what we've yeah, done. We were able to find some money through the Esther Bank where we had uh, allocated it for uh, air quality. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, really, Tint on the windows is much better than those archaic ones that collect all the dust and they have to be constantly mm -hmm. cleaned. Yeah. So that's one way that we're able to find the money. To and that, like some, yeah, and they can't see in, but you know, it's good the kids can see out and you know, get a little bit of sun. So it's, overall, I think it's it's a really good thing. And so. one more thing before I stop. Okay, if we're going to move that fence down there, that, I mean, that is that playground is just open yeah. for the public. Is there any way that we can put Something on there so anyone coming by cannot see children in their room and know that there's children at the, at the, the lower playground. Yes, and that they couldn't be in a, an open park. Put that shade that they put on fencing for baseball fields. Yeah, that's what I was saying. That's what yeah. I was yeah. thinking about because yeah. I thought well, was, I, I, what did we do yeah. for that reason over at the yeah. school, over at the high school, even though that campus is more closed in. I thought that was an excellent idea. Well, it's good, but at the same time, most of all the fence is only three, four foot high. Well, now I know. So you got to be, you can still see over it. That right. That's always been a concern because we're so. Well, the whole the whole campus is a concern. I mean, really. I know, but it's so open when kids are down there playing. Yeah, it's just yeah, scary. I, I, it really is. I want to use this as another opportunity to say we really need to work toward a different elementary campus that can be more safe. Yes, yes absolutely. I'm not, I'm not, it's not. <laughs> we're, we're always thinking about that. You know, every time we get opportunity, I think it needs to be said that needs to be in our you know short term and long term plans to look really at a more safe and secure elementary school. Thank you, all Miss Kay. Uh, just a couple of things. Yesterday we had exceptional children's field day at uh, Robbinsville High School. We had 90 EC students come out and join us and participate in that. And it went really well. Uh, the enthusiasm that the students have to receive medals and compete like that was just a very uh, joyful uh, experience. I think everyone, I heard a lot of uh, people basically um, <coughs> saying a lot of positive things and very thankful for that opportunity for uh, students to compete in events. It was just a great day. Um, as way as preschool, we have a field day coming up also for preschool on May the 9th out here in, in the football field. The graduation for preschool is May the 25th from 6 to 8 at Robertsville High School Auditorium. 
you'd like to join us for that. Uh, we are still accepting applications for preschool. Right now we have 33. We can take up to 54. So we're really trying to get the word out for that. Free preschoolers trying to have enough to have three rooms uh, for next year and be able to budget that. So that is a high, um, a high priority for us at this time. So other than that, that's all. Uh, one thing I'd like to add to that is that each of the students, athletes yesterday had a <coughs> uh, peer person, help. peer helper with them from the high school, and that was really nice to see all those high school kids out there one-to-one -one helping those students. I can't say that if you've never been, it is the most uh, rewarding thing to watch those high school students follow those kids around the track, cheering them on and uh, you know just providing encouragement it, it's a wonderful opportunity for both exceptional children and our uh, student athletes it's it's great so hopefully next year uh, now that the, i'm going to try to work with the other schools to see if we can start back and have some local competition with surrounding schools um you know because that makes it even better but yesterday was good but we'll always offer something for our kids so i was just glad to get back at it because we've not been able to host anything in the last couple of years due to COVID. And, and they were happy. Special Olympics. They've not started that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, and you know, a lot of the counties are still reluctant to have or to collaborate with the other surrounding counties due to that. So, we just work. That's a thing for me to work on this summer is to see what we can get into place for next school year. Thank you, Ms. Kennedy. You're welcome. Field trips. <coughs> Somebody said they had a field trip. Sorry, was it with Taylor or Harry? Yeah. Go ahead. You may have. Go ahead and I'll have two of Okay. Um, I have one for um, the Cy Girls for this summer. Um, it will be an overnight trip uh, May 31st through June 2nd. They are um, planning to travel to Wake Forest University and NC State University on their way to the North Carolina Aquarium. And they've got some uh, behind the scenes tours and things like that that these students would have the opportunity to do. Um, it would be 10 students and the chaperones would be Ben and Amber Davis for the Cy Girls program. And how many kids are going? 10. 10. Okay, you have any more? The, the other information that I have would be for the junior senior trip for the year of 2025. Oh, okay. So it would be like current sophomores looking for. Okay, a so years we wouldn't from. have to vote on that. Really. Well, the only thing is they'd like to look at get some planning and look at the see where they could, you know. I think they're looking at doing some uh, alternating of locations, possibly. Yes. With even Puerto Rico being an option, mm -hmm. I have heard. That so, is, um, that's their hope. Um, we've had a, a decrease in interest, and so they're trying to alternate between um, kind of the traditional New York and D.C. Um, and Mr. Davis has been going around and kind of doing some polls and getting some information from these kids where they would be interested in traveling to. Um, and their number one choice would be Puerto Rico. Um, so he's found some information for um, that, which again, it would be 2025. Um, but the cost of that is about um, $2,400. And so if we could go ahead and begin planning that and talking to students, they can go ahead and enroll and their monthly payment is around $100. Right. So that it's not so much of a hardship at you know one time. Um, and then they have a another one um, in Florida that they are um, interested in as an alternate location. Um, it goes to Key Largo um, and visits, um, let's see, the Pinnacle Camp Coral Reef State Park. So um, that would be their alternate there. And it's um, about $2,000. And so if we could go ahead and start planning if that would be the choice. Um, it would be about $95 a month for families. What were they planning on going this year? Um, and then go, was it, was it New Orleans? I think so. So have they completely done away with deciding to go to New Orleans? No, they have not. Um, I 
I'm sorry. Or was that the plan for next year mm -hmm. to do the Washington and um, New York, and then the next year? And then the next year, year something, something different. Like that. And go oh, back okay. to Washington. Oh, you're York. talking about that's what you were talking about. Yes, your Washington and New York. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. So, so it's kind of alternate so years. Theoretically, since more than just seniors to go, you could go on both trips. Right. You know, if you mm -hmm. wanted to. So. Yeah. Just to offer them more opportunities to see what's around. Okay. All right, I have a motion to approve first the Science Girls, uh, Sci Girls trip to Wake Forest and North Carolina State on the 31st of May through June 2nd. Do I have a motion to approve that? Yes, I approve the Sci Girls. Do, do I have a second? All in favor? Any opposed? Now, do I have a motion to allow uh, them to, uh, the principals or whoever is in charge of it, Eric and David, uh, to begin uh, preparation for the 2025 junior senior trip, possibly to Florida, possibly to Puerto Rico? This would be just giving them permission. To, to start plans for it. How many we get permission to go ahead and start the 25 trip to either Puerto Rico or Florida for, mm -hmm. for the juniors and seniors? Do I have a second? I second. All in favor? Any opposed? Okay. Is that it? That's it. Okay. Anyone else? I've got one. Oh, you've got it. Yes. Miss Freeman. Um, so I need permission to take three students and myself and Stuart Nelms um, to Charlotte. It is at the Thunderbird YMCA camp. Um, it is a leadership summit for um, teens. And uh, we hosted Ms. Karen Fairley from DPI last month. And um, when she got home, she was so impressed with some of our kids that she called me back and invited us to bring three of our students so everything is free we just need permission to go spend the night it's the 19th and the 20th we'll return on the 21st the 19th is a testing day so we will not leave until all the all three students have completed their testing obviously do i have a motion to approve uh, Ms. springle's request to take three students to charlotte at the Thunderbird YMCA camp. They will leave late on the 19th of May and return on the 21st. Do I have a motion to approve this trip? I make a motion to approve the YMCA trip, Mr. Virginia. Do I have a second? I second. All in favor? Any opposed? Okay. Any more field trips? All right. All right, Mr. Green, budget amendments. <laughs> and now we're this is the most exciting part of the meeting. I don't know what everybody's been, <laughs> been up about it. Most important man in the room. He talks about the money. Uh, okay, before you, uh, I'm giving you uh, budget amendments for um, four pages. I'll go through these quickly, except for uh, page two. I'll go through that with a little bit of uh, background and detail on that budget amendment. But the first page, uh, this is a budget amendment to the state public school fund. Uh, this is for PRC 15, and PRC stands for Program Reporting Code. That's usually uh, a numbering system to identify a different pot of money within a fund. Uh, this is PRC 15, which is School Technology Fund. We receive an additional $973 and plan to use that for supplies and materials. Uh, next page, this is a budget amendment to the federal fund. And this is one that I'll give some more detail and background to. This is for PRC 110. This is a 21st century uh, after school grant. Um, as most of you are aware, uh, this grant is typically $400,000 per year. and we received those funds in three installments. Um, we received the first installment October 1st, second installment, and then third installment. 
But here's something I want to read to you. Uh, it's very important. Last school year, in order to receive the third installment, 75% uh, of our students that are in the program, that's 135 students, including the ones that go about the center, in order to receive that third installment, 75% of those students only needed 15 or more tutoring hours. Okay? This year, the game has changed. Uh, this year, that third installment, in order to receive that, 75% of our students must receive 90 or more tutoring hours. Wow. That's six times. That's a big job. <laughs> six times what's required from last year. Wow. And you're the winner. So, you wouldn't have to be there every day, basically. Yeah. Um, in my opinion, I, you know, uh, I, I don't deal with that every day, but I have dealt with this um, uh, my entire tenure. I don't know if that's actually attainable. Um, it's very difficult. Yeah. 90 plus hours well, for 75%. Almost every day. Yeah, and we have K-12, so we're competing with sports, jobs. I mean, sure. But in order, these are these these are this is a requirement. So um, and this is a federal grant. This is a federal yes. grant. Um, so at this <coughs> point in the year, we've not met that requirement. So uh, we have to reduce our budget uh, by one third. Thirty-two percent is the actual number, and that represents one hundred twenty-eight thousand dollars we have to take out of this budget. When did we know that they had? Did they change the we, we were aware of this in March. Wow. Jeez. So, well, that's, so they changed that the may, It's sneaky. Well, <laughs> I knew about it in November, so I was trying to keep track. And I could still they changed. Yeah, me and the ground. Right. Yeah. Sure. Could this be lost in translation somehow? That, did you? I mean, oh, no, no, it's They just asked for what, what are we averaging? For daily attendance, I mean, or, or, yeah, well, how many hours are we at now? Obviously, we're not there. No. Um, I would say 50 of those 100 kids that need to be have 90 hours, we have probably 50 of those. That's very difficult. I would say. You know, it's very oh. extremely difficult to, to, to meet that so, requirement. So this is going to, we're going to have to, after you know, we, we get the to the board meeting, we're going to have to meet and dis discuss mm -hmm. then what little bit of funds we have remaining. Do we finish tutoring for the rest of the year, or do we offer any kind of summer program? Which we were very dependent on this for a summer program, and so we're going to have to look, first look at some guidance from the from the uh, state who monitor help us monitor the federal grant because that's also part of the we're supposed to have a summer component yes. to it. A six week summer uh, component. Yes, and so that's not going to look very big. Okay. And so um, we're, those are some big decisions we're going to have to make. Sure. And we'll, we'll discuss that this week. Uh, we'll notify everyone involved, you know, what our plan of action is. I think uh, there's a requirement, you know, the six week six summer weeks. school. Um, so that's not that, off the table. Does that come out of here? It does. Yes. Yes. Because I have already asked if we could do a grant amendment and do a shorter summer, and that is not possible. All right. So, so one thing I'll be coming back to the board and talking about is maybe meeting a little bit sooner than the June meeting because we would like to go ahead and get staff in place and, and make some plans ahead of some of this. So, summer school is for grades K twelve. For twenty first century. Yes, for twenty first century grades. Sure. Now what I have done is an uh, um, uh, individual at, uh, she's the uh, fiscal analyst, uh, Monica Pask, um, with the Office of Federal Programs at DPI. Um, I, I sent an email uh, yesterday pleading to, that some kind of help. Um, uh, she's aware of what our uh, situation is, anything that they can, uh, any type of waiver or whatever that they can give to us would help us because these funds, not only do we have to have those funds here in summer school, but these funds overlap our fiscal year. We need these funds until September 30th. So that's uh, that's the situation we're in with this budget. Yeah, so the way that this works since it's federal money is like last year, we didn't really, we didn't get 
it starts in September or October? October. Well, October because it's federal money, and so September 30th is the end of the federal year. Right. And so, um, so really, you're looking from October till now to make the not just. Yeah. I mean, really, that's a shorter time period anyway. I would I would think that most of the most of the school systems across the state are about the same, but we are as meeting this requirement. Yes, it's almost impossible. We're just looking at possibly no more tutoring. Possibly. It's a possibility. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 Because there are expenditures that we're required to make from now in September, and part of that is the contract we have with uh, Steve Obama Center. So uh, part of this budget amendment reduces their allotment of $60,000 by uh, 32%, and they're aware of that. So you know, that's what we're facing. Uh, but I, I won't go into the details of the line items in this budget amendment, but the reduction in this budget is uh, $128,000. Uh, next page, this is a budget amendment for capital outlay fund, and I'll give you a little bit of detail about this. Um, I've spoken to you about expenditures that we have made out of local uh, that we were getting reimbursements for. Remember me speaking about that. Um, this particular uh, budget amendment is for uh, the HVAC, uh, some uh, units we call mini splits. That project is completed. Uh, we made those expenditures out of our local account because that's where we had funds available to do it. Uh, like I said, that project is complete. Uh, I sent in a reimbursement request for lottery funds, at DPI. We have received those funds. Uh, but this, these expenditures and revenues were in our local account. Okay, This is a big ticket item. It's a capital project and should show up in fund four which is the capital outlay fund. You'll see that in the third line of your budget amendment there. Um, I've already made general entries to move those expenditures and revenues into capital outlay uh, based on uh, recommendations of Anderson, Smith, and White, our auditors. But this, not only are those expenditures, actual expenditures and revenues now in fund four, but you also have to have a budget to mirror those actual expenditure and revenue. So that's what this budget amendment is. So but you're looking for reimbursement on that. We've already received that reimbursement. Okay. Yes. So the amount there for this project was two hundred and forty nine thousand nine hundred and one dollars for those uh, HVAC mini splits that were uh, installed at the elementary uh, uh, elementary buildings and also the uh, gymnasium. The last page, this is a budget amendment to fund aid or two budget amendments. Uh, the first section there is impact aids. Um, historically, I always budget conservatively for impact aid, around $600,000 each year. And during the year after we have received our actual revenues, um, then I revise this budget. So uh, we have received those revenues and those revenues are approximately $880,000. So that's two hundred twenty thousand or two hundred eighty thousand more than what I originally budgeted. So uh, we, I like to take these uh, actual revenues and spread those out over other line items with the budget, so we know what we've actually got to spend, and we don't go over that budget. <coughs> Impact aid is a source of funding that helps our with our local helps us with our local expenditures. Uh, the funding that we receive from the county, uh, timber receipts, uh, etc. Uh, doesn't cover all of our local expenditures that we have. So impact aid helps with our local budget. So, Mr. Green, what's a, was that a, about the same or an increase or decrease based on the uh, total revenue that we received last year? Last year, uh, the, the amount that we received was approximately 619000 Total. Total. So, so this year there was an increase. Okay. Um, I, I worked with... Uh, uh, Ned Long and his staff, and we really uh, found a lot more uh, students that uh, are federally connected. That increases our revenue for impact aid. So that's the reason for the increase. Uh, but again, um, that increase in the revenue and the budget expenditures is approximately $280,000. Next section down is uh, 
PRC 655, this is a TIPI grant. There's no change in the uh, revenues here, uh, but it is realignment of uh, some budget expenditures. So we're taking uh, approximately $659 out of staff training and moving that into sponsored meeting expenses. Any questions about budget meetings? Do I have a motion to uh, approve the uh, budget amendments as presented by Mr. Green? Motion to approve the amendments, the, uh, amendments as presented. Do I have a second? I'll second it. All in favor? Any opposed? Okay. The local request. Uh, if you would please, you've got a. Uh, packet there at the top of St. Graham County Schools. It's actually seven pages. The first one there says one of six, but there's a capital outlet need budget uh, at the end. If you will turn to page three, please. At the bottom of that page, you will see what our uh, county allotment is for this fiscal year. It's $1,263,000. A little background about that increase. Several years we received one million dollars from the county. Um, it's not I met with the county commissioners and uh, a couple of our state representatives last year. Uh, I presented a spreadsheet to them, showing them what an increase would look like from that million dollars. That spreadsheet showed what the increase would look like if we were, were to receive a five percent increase each year afterward. 7.5% and 10%. And they were graciously enough to opt for the 7.5% increase going forward. So this budget represents a 7.5% increase from what we're receiving currently this year. So that amount is the second line up. That's $1,357,000. Oh, sorry. Right here. $1,357,725. Now, if you will, flip back to page one and I'll go through these uh, PRCs individually real quickly just so uh, the folks know uh, part of our, uh, what this funding represents. Um, I'll, I'll speak about the PRC number and the description and just give the total budget. First section there is uh, PRC 706. This is local transportation. Uh, this doesn't involve yellow buses, or local vehicles. Total budget is 120,000. Next section down is regular instruction. That's PRC 801. Uh, the budget there is 190,000. And the majority of this budget is made up of uh, coaching supplements, referee expenses, a van supplement, and the matching benefits that go with those expenditures. And there's also a vocational rehab contract there for $14,000. Again, that budget is $190,000. Next section down is uh, Board of Education, PRC 810. That's pretty uh, self explanatory. That budget is $25,000. Next page, this is Central Office. This is your expenditure made uh, on behalf of. Uh, this unit here, the total budget is $225,000. You can scan down three to see what those expenditures are for. Next section is the principal's office, PRC 812. The budget there is $35,000. Uh, the principals and assistant principal supplements are paid from here, and also some supplies and materials and contract services. Next section down, this is probably this is the biggest. Uh, Pot of money within the local budget. This is operational plant. Total there is $417,725. Uh, involved items like electricity, propane, water, telephones, and uh, property, insurance, property insurance, supplies, materials, and fuel. Next page. This is for maintenance, PLC 815. The budget there is $300,000. You'll see a lot of items there for maintenance salaries, um, insurance contract, contracted uh, services, etc. Uh, one thing to mention about maintenance and also uh, operational expenditures for custodial supplies and uh, maintenance supplies, we try to pay a majority of their salaries out of PRC 19, that small school supplemental uh, funding, which is in the state fund. And there's a reason for that. 
those folks were more likely to have an on-the-job injury. So if those folks, the majority of their uh, salary benefits were paid out of state funds, we have two uh, <coughs> workers' comp policies. One is paid by state, one is local. So the more folks that we have paid out of state funds, uh, it increases uh, our ability to save some funds, uh, local funds. So just like PRC-19? PRC-19 in the state fund. <coughs> uh, the next section down, other benefits. Uh, this is simply insurance, the budget there, 45,000. You'll see workers' comp, unemployment insurance, and health insurance. And the total, um, and this, these PRCs represent the pots of money that um, are involved with the uh, allotment that we receive from the county. And that, again, that budget is one million three hundred fifty-seven thousand seven hundred twenty-five dollars. Okay. Uh, next page. These are two small budgets that we also have in Fund Two. Uh, fines and forfeitures, which we received from uh, Clerk of Superior Court. Total there is twenty thousand. Um, you'll see there workshop expense uniforms and uh, safety and security supplies. Uh, these funds, because we lost some of the safe schools funding through federal funding, we allocate these funds for the um, uh, school resource officers. And yeah, we lost that because the federal government no longer provides it, not because we, we didn't lose it, but I mean, it's lost and they don't provide those federally. Anymore. Exactly. But these funds and forfeiture books, is that part of what? Or does it come from the clerk's office, such as? Is it a percentage? Uh, I, I don't know what the formula is, but it's uh, fines that they levy and statutorily some of those fines come to the school system. And the forfeitures would be if they confiscated the vehicle and sold it. Yeah, okay. So that's your percentage of that. Uh, next section down is four service receipts, and I always uh, budget this conservatively. Uh, that's 40000 uh, We use that to help with our operational expenditures. Uh, but last year we received 143,000. Um, that's typically the level, but um, sometimes the federal government does not want to renew, you know, those uh, those funds at the level we've been receiving. And historically, uh, years ago, usually what we got was around 40 to 42 thousand dollars. So I always want to. Budget concern. And we really won't know what that amount is until probably January, February of 2024. Well, uh, we, received, we received those funds usually in May or June. Okay. They flow to the county, um, and by law, if that amount is less than $100,000, we get 100% of those timber receipts. If it's greater than $100,000, then we get 80%, and they get to keep 20%. Then we won't know it. I mean, the reason you won't even budget what you think is because we don't know today, and that's this is going to come into the local government, we won't know in time to get a specific amount. And then we always budget this conservatively because, um, you know, we know that um, we're going to get those funds later in the year, and whatever those funds are, I revise the budget just like we do with Impact A. Once those actual revenues come in, then I'll just bump that up. So that we know what we can actually uh, have to spend. Okay. Um, next page. Uh, this is a budget of, uh, amendment um, for Impact A. Um, again, um, I'm mentioning here that I conservatively budget six hundred thousand dollars for those funds. We don't know what we'll receive next year, um, but this is a large budget. I won't go over it in detail. Again, uh, this is just to help with our local expenditures uh, in addition to county funding and timber receipts, etc. Okay. Most of those would be the operational expenditures that we have. And the next page, uh, these are the budgeted revenues. Those are listed there. Um, total revenues. Uh, this, you'll notice this will be in balance with the revenues that I've presented on the previous pages. Total budget for uh, Fund 2 and Fund 8, which also includes the county funding, is $2,017,725. Okay. If you prove that, that's what I'll be presenting to the 
County before May 15th. Uh, the last page, uh, you'll notice if you look to the bottom of this page, it's highlighted in there. This budget is a capital needs budget. Um, we've identified what some of our needs are and what goes in the capital budget, capital outlay budget, is anything that's $5,000 or great, big ticket items like your HVAC, chillers, boilers, uh, vehicles, activity buses. Um, I'm not going to go over this in, in detail. You've got a list there. Some of these are recurring items. But two that I really want to mention that we've identified in the last section down there, the intercom systems for both campuses. We've, we've got an estimate there for $300,000. Um, that's a need uh, that we discussed. Um, another need is the last one there, the supports for the football field bleachers. That's also $300,000. Now this total budget is $881,000 of <coughs> capital needs doesn't mean we'll have the funds to meet all of these projects. And again, during the year, you're gonna have capital projects that, um, that come about that's not on this list that you have, you have no choice but to meet that lead. So um, it is, this budget is, these needs are typically, these are to double what our capital needs we've identified in the past. So typically it's gonna be anywhere from 275,000 to 400. But those those two there at the end are significant. I just want to bring that. Yes, and just and, and this movie might can speak a little bit more to the intercom and, and I know that uh, probably Ms. Sawyer and Ms. Walsh can can chime in from your campus, but uh, we have pretty archaic systems for intercoms in the school and and really that's a safety risk because if you're trying to get something out across the intercom you can get all the way to the you know, cafeteria, or you can get all the way to kindergarten rooms, or, or you can't get, you know, it doesn't jive from middle school to high school. Um, there's a lot of things that are connected to that, and it's just an archaic system. I mean, we're looking at our high school building right now, it's got some age on it. I mean, we still think of it as the new school, but it's not so new anymore, you know. So, these are the kind of things that we've got coming up that are going to be big ticket items. And, and the other thing, talking about the football field bleachers, and, and somebody here that has a little bit more historical knowledge uh, time wise can think about this, but those bleachers have been there since the when we decided that. Like yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's a long time. And so, what we're looking at is the supports underneath those are shifting. At one point, one of the supports was within that eighth and a fourth of an inch of, of coming off. That means they're almost slide down the hill and crumble. There's some uh, concrete crumbling underneath them, and, and we're, you know, we, we do not, the investment in that is <coughs> nothing compared to someone with, with, to be hurt or, you know, God forbid, killed when those things come back. Sure. So uh, we have done some things, uh, preventative uh, work that I have to say, um, my maintenance staff for them to crawl under those big concrete bleachers and put their life in jeopardy to do what they've done. Mm -hmm. I can't say enough about that. You can't put a tag on what, how important that is. Sure. Um, but looking at the future, if we want Big Oak Stadium to stay Big Oak Stadium and we don't want it um, to have to shut down, we're going to have to look at what we're going to do to revise those bleachers. And this is probably a conversation too that we can continue with the county commissioners because it's going to have to be a joint effort. We all use that stadium on it. Um, but right now that's something to say, you know, right now we're, we've kind of patched a bigger problem. Well, now we have help with the visitor side, right? That's mm -hmm. been redone. It is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you know, just these are just kind of I kind of refer to this capital outlay project list as kind of a wish list. Some of it's absolutely necessary, but some of it is like down the road we know it's going to happen. And we could you know we could put five times the amount of things on here that, that we wish would happen. Uh, but these are some of the things that are coming up that we know for sure is going to have to have to be dealt with in the, in the next little bit. Is, is is that the original intercom system over in the high school and middle school? Has yes. it ever it is. been changed? It's had upgrades, but it's never been changed. It's, 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 a better, it's in better shape than the elementary. Yeah. I was oh, trying to yeah. say. There's a dead spot to the elementary. There's a dead spot to the elementary. Did you get that radios? Yeah. That's one of the reasons we're trying to get radios as many hands as I can each year with 
safe skills that mm. we should have communication. Well, you, it, you probably can't hear in the gym. Uh, they are. There's a bunch of kids. It goes in the gym, but you can't hear it. And you do. And the high school and middle school, that middle school, you high school doesn't hear, but we can separate announcements. We can either do it to one school or to both. But they tried to add some additional panels, and the system's so archaic that they are no longer available. So they can't. Yes, it's to capacity what it's doing right now, and there's not really replacement parts. That's what I'm listening to. I've got a question, and this would be for Tanya and Erica. Uh, when I was teaching in the middle school, uh, if we got, got let out for snow or something like that, so many people, we did, this was before cell phones, so many people were trying to call out, you couldn't call out. Is it still that way? The, we've replaced the phone system since. I mean, oh, we you have? Yeah. They, we went to IP address systems in America, say, talk about more, but we completely redid the, the phone okay. system. So we can't right. install that, that, that eases my mind. All right, I have a motion to approve the local current expense for the 2024 budget year. Do I have a motion to approve that as presented by Mr. Green? Madam Chair, Mr. Green. Do I have a motion to approve the local current expense for 2024 budget year as presented by Mr. Green?
Yeah, There's a lot of miles on those buses. Yeah. Well, not only that, it's just, it's, I mean, if you need an activity bus, you need an activity bus. Yeah. And it's, yeah. but, but these are our kids that are going over there. So. Yes, we make that available for them to use for our students. And it's one week. It's one week. Yeah. Oh, oh, one week. It's just for one week. Oh, yes. okay. And they may not even use our bus, but this gives them the authority or uh, the uh, Ability to use of the bus, an active bus should be legal. Yeah, I mean, they take it from the town out there. Yeah. And they use our drivers. They mm -hmm. Yeah, they have to leave such a gift. I like it. I like it. Do I have a motion to approve the resolution authorizing use of the activity buses? And this would be for the Stacola community. I make a motion we authorize the use of activity buses in the Stacola Center for the summer. Do I have a second? I All in favor? Any opposed? Um, now, one other uh, document or set of documents I'll give to you after you come back after closed session will be the expenditure reports. And the important part of that is second page where you can see where we are during the year, whether we're over or under budget in a particular fund. I give those out every month, second half of the year, so I'll hand those out when um, we come back and close this. Okay. 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 Informed consent, Ms. Dean. Yes, informed consent policy, I probably should say. I am going to make a motion for a policy. Um, informed consent, I'd like to see it put in place in lieu of opt-out options. Opt-out options is embedded in here. You can't get rid of it and, and everything. I, I've been looking at it for months months, and I've thought about it, and thought about it, prayed about it, talked about it, God, because there's only time. But we can't get rid of it. So the opt-out options, I kind of look at it like I'm boxing it up, and I'm sitting it over here, and I know it's there, and there's nothing I can do about it. So, in order to have um, parents make the decision, opt-out options obviously leave the parents in a kind of a weird position. If you don't know to opt-out, your kid automatically goes in. It's like automatically, which is not informed consent. It's opposite of that. And obviously, I'm, I'm in the Constitution, so that sounds constitutional to me. Sounds like the right thing to do. We can have opt-out options because obviously we can't get rid of them, but we also could have a policy where it's informed consent. Parents have to decide whether they want these kids and these things. Now, I don't know if this survey is a part of an opt-out option, but I believe, I've, I've been doing my own little surveys and talking to people. You know, not one, well, one name, but out of all the people I spoke to about opt-out options at school, they didn't even know what it was. And when I told them, they were mad about it. So, I, I didn't really have anything to go on during that time, but now I do. I can tell you right now, after I've seen this, this, this is an eighth grade survey that was done in the auditorium. And it has a question on it that goes against, I don't know if it goes against everybody else's brain, but it does mine. It's a gender question. Now, I've said it was eighth graders, okay? I'm not talking about adults, I'm talking about children. It says, what is your gender? Male, female, non-binary, e.g., gender fluid, agender, other. Now, I wouldn't have, I'm not saying we shouldn't kind of go along a little bit with the woke stuff because we don't have to. But we didn't have to say all that. Why couldn't we have said other? You know, I am telling you right now, the parents are just furious about this stuff because they don't introduce stuff like that. Picture yourself sitting down to dinner with the pastor and your child says, I have a, a gender question in my eighth grade survey today. I mean, your, the mother will fall on the floor when you say non-binary and gender fluid. Now, I don't know if you know how serious, but kids look kind of funny about this stuff, and they want to look it up. I'm just warning parents right now. If there's people that got children listening on the thing, I'm just going to warn you right now. I'm about to say something I don't want kids to look up. But if they start looking this stuff up, guess what they can find? Something called a map. You know, all of us just got a map picture, right? What's a map look like? No, a map according to these things, comes up, and it's mature, what is it? A minor attracted person. A minor attracted person. Paul Parton, you know, from the forum, the BP, she, she sent me something on that, and she said, you won't believe it. I said, well, I'll believe anything, but that was pretty bad. When I looked it up, it made me sick. This is the picture of that. I would hate for any of our kids 
to start getting it all funny and looking this up. So my daughter said, Mom, eighth graders probably know a lot about all this stuff, but I'll bet you there's plenty of little eighth grade kids that are not up on all this. And we introduced this in our school system. We're influencers. I mean, influencers introduce this. It makes it legit. Is there just male and female or am I wrong? The science changed male and female. That's all there is. We, if you're going to put other just a pacifying, we'll fine. But to put that in there just is wrong. So um, I don't know if this is, can you, you can't say if this is opt out or not. I mean, uh, opt out option with this. Uh, excuse me, is that, what survey is that? Europe, 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 Europe is Europe is Europe is Europe is correct? Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a federal. And I, I don't know if that comes through. We don't have Ms. Williams here today to, mm -hmm. to I, I will say that after that survey was given, they, our school system did request that we just put other. I don't know what your survey is going to look like, but it was a request that we made on, on behalf of the school system. Well, we're kind of, we're falling into this stuff, just, we don't mean to. Nobody here means to do it. I don't think anybody means to do it. This is what it means to, though, pay attention to what's coming in here. But, God being God and all, he kind of gave me the informed consent policy. And I called the North Carolina School Board Association, and I spoke to a nice lady who was named Mrs. Boyd. And she actually did the, uh, the spring conference on law. I, I recognized her voice as soon as I started talking to her. And, um, and I asked her about making a policy. Can we make a policy in informed consent that we pass as a local board? That would mean that parents have a say if they want their kids to take this stuff or not. And then I would feel like I did my constitutional duty. And also, I can't sell opt-out to parents, and I can't sell it to Jesus. So if we can't sell it, let's do, let's do something that's constitutional, that we're a conservative Christian board, all of us. We have conservative Christian values. Parents are important to us, and so is the Constitution. So, if we pass a policy of informed consent, it would be set down in the school system, and no parent has to wonder if their kids are taking this. You're going to know in advance. And then you can say yes or no. And doesn't that sound like the right thing to do? Uh, Ms. Walsh, this was eighth grade. Yes, and, and I would and like to. I would like to speak up on that uh -huh. on that survey. That survey is a Europe survey. Um, it comes from App State. We received lots of funding. I don't know where Mr. Green uh -huh. went, but from Gear Up, and that is not. That is one of the questions at the top, but the survey goes in depth about college and knowledge about college and all of that. Miss Williams gave the survey to the students in the in the auditorium. She read every question, and when it came to that, she said, "Mark, male or female." So, in that context, she addressed it. But because it's federal funds and because it comes from a university, they require that as if if you get any emails from anyone from a university right now, they are required to use their pronouns which I disagree with, but that is a requirement because of how they receive funding. And all of the communication from App State, underneath their name, they will have the proteins, their pronouns li listed. Okay. Appreciate it. So, okay. That's consistent. Thank you. That's consistent with what a student also, and this is how I found out about it, too. A student told his dad, and then his dad told me, and it's exactly what they said, that you guys went over everything, and that it was, it was kind of trying to be controlled. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't believe y'all. And nothing. No, we did not linger up on that question because the meat of the survey is about college and knowledge yeah. about college. Did they have to take the survey? Yes. Every student had to. Be what is it? How now? much money do we receive from Europe? This year's budget. I'd have to go back and look, but uh, well, it changes each year. But you're talking I about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. Yeah, I've seen that. I've seen that. And that's, I understand, <clears throat> we're, doing, we're doing this because we do need the money. I understand. But Leticia Wiggins spoke at a meeting this and you know what she said? She said, you know, there was something trying to come in. You guys remember this, because you both were talking about it. He said, there was something trying to come in. You said, I know that's not going to go through Grand Crack County. People aren't going to like it. And you told Miss Knight, or Miss Knight, Miss Knight, and Miss Knight agreed. And then, I'm not sure how you handled that. Or if you that, told that me. was an option whether or not we did the uh, Yes. You, what was it? Uh, 
was a, um, it was a survey that uh, is often uh, generated through the Department of Public Instruction, and it was a survey that had some far-reaching questions, and we'll just leave it at that. And, yeah. and we and you, discussed you that. Stood up, didn't you? And I'm telling you, that's a hero moment, if you know. Our people it's don't optional. spend. It was optional. And we discussed that um, at the state level when we thought that for our students that it was probably not the most appropriate action to take. And I appreciate it. That's a humor moment because I'm telling you, I was Is there any way we can let parents know that we are going to give a survey at any time? That we can just can we shoot it out there on something saying tomorrow your, your eighth grade student is going to take a whatever that survey is? It's pretty invasive. Now, it is asking, I put on my notes, I always put notes and stuff. Everything was okay. I got okays on everything going through here. And then my first page, I think it was too invasive. I guess what I would like to see is I'd like to see the parents look at this and say what their kids are being asked to answer on, on a survey. I, I'm, I'm telling you, when Annabelle gets to this, this grade, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really not want to see her take that. We don't talk about this stuff at our house. We, we, we're going to run into this. And as a matter of fact, I got news for folks. I've got transgender, gay friends. I, I got every kind of friends you can imagine. I love people. I don't have anything against anybody. Well, I, I, they would tell you. My friends would tell you. Don't introduce this to the kids. Their own selves they would tell you not to do. So I'd like to see all of this. The parents see if they agree, then they agree. But aside from that, this didn't even have an opt-out policy with it, huh? Just was required. It was required for us to receive funding. Okay. So that I am not got And I will provide. speak up and say that regardless of what anybody wants to believe, the kids are talking about these things. Yes. Oh, absolutely. And as far as my personal child would go, I would think it would open a door as a parent to have those conversations with them when they might not mention that at all. But I can guarantee you that I, the kids are talking about it. They have heard about it. Urban Dictionary, I don't know if you are familiar with that, but I use it every day. So that I will know what kids are talking about. I mean, you know, and I'm stunned I sometimes, but I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. Well, I just think that we can. Um, that'll provide way. I'll, I'll, it'll come. So what I what I keep I didn't come up with. I feel like God just put it in my heart. You need you need to start a a a, a, a place where we have parents decide on everything in here, and actually liability wise, I like it because then I don't know I don't have to make the decision. They make the decision. So. It's called informed consent policy. And when I spoke to the attorney about it, I asked her point blank, can we make a policy like this? And she said, of course, people do it all the time. So our board, we could just make that. And I think that would appease some parents, because I don't think every person I show all this stuff to, they just get mad. It's, I don't know why I don't know this. Well, I don't know either. It's <coughs> coming to me, and I can't do nothing with it. So this is what I'm doing. All right, so I make a motion. Oh, I didn't tell you what could happen with it. You're going to have these kids that are not going into these surveys. How long did this survey take? Um, since she read it to them, 20, 30 minutes. So 30, 20, 30 minutes, they could have been in something else where we're actually focused on test scores. Mr. Matheson said, we got a test scores. You're not going to like them. We can't blame code. So how I saw, this is how God dumped it on me. But anytime you have an opportunity, take the time to start teaching the kids. You know who's going to be in these opt-out classes, well, they won't be in their surveys. They won't be in their parents' own group. So let's use them for times when we teach people. And don't teach them how we teach them. Teach them how they learn. When I didn't know how to do math and I, I went back to school, I had a GB book teach me math. Nothing could teach me math. But that GB book did because it used an approach I'd never seen before. And of course, I got my GED. Can you imagine using that policy here? Whatever that was, if that we use that in here, all the kids are getting low test scores in math could in just a few weeks be up to level to take a GED test because I was. And I passed and I went on to work for UPS. Okay. We have a policy committee, and so that's what you've always relied on right. is the policy committee will review and come back to the board with it. And you really are assigned by the General Assembly with the powers to run the school and make decisions. Right. Parents are involved. 
pursuant to state law to be required, but we can't transfer liability to parents. The school board's charged with about 62 duties that you shall do to operate school. Right. One of them is come up with policy, and you don't, you go to your staff and you have a policy committee. Okay, and so why, Max, we, need to, we need to have a motion to uh, charge policy the policy committee, committee to, to look at to look at a informed, informed consent policy. We have to do opt out. That's both federal and state. Yeah. Parents are receive notice. Which is part of the to receive notice policy that you already have. So yes. we already have a lot of that, and perhaps um, the policy committee can inform the board of what you already have. Okay. As well as look at. Opt out. So we and if Miss Denzel has some information as opposed to just statements, if she has some written information that she could provide for what? Do we already do informed consent here? Well, I thought that's what you. Yes, we do. Oh, I was going to say I kind of. I thought you wanted to make. I thought you said we didn't. No, I'm not the. No, no, I see what you're saying. No, I know we have to keep. The opt out stuff, and there's nothing I can do. I've already put them over here on the show, but opt in policies are already here. So, just the same policy as always when when people go on trips, parents have to give them um, permission. So, I'm you're wanting informed that. consent for surveys for surveys for anything where a parent has a choice. I don't care because I don't know. I keep I'm finding out though, well, there's some why don't you make a motion to refer to the policy committee to pull together. Um, David Matheson heads that up. Eric Sawyer, uh, I think she's on it. Two four parents of what's going on. Okay, so what I'm going to do, and, and instead of just making a decision, I don't, I, I know so little. I'm going to wait, and I'm going to call back this attorney, and I'm going to speak to her, and I'm going to ask her how other boards do it. You know what I'm saying? Set examples. Yeah, I, and then that might help you guys. Where other boards have made decisions and said. We just we take an arbitrary approach to this because we can't. We do have the power to do it. Well, this board has a policy committee. They assign to the policy committee mm -hmm. things they need help with, and come back and decide to change it, add to it, whatever. So. So are you saying that they don't? Um, let's see. I don't know what you're saying, but there's the procedure on this board is they have a policy committee. You're wanting information on informed consent. This board can, you can make a motion to assign that to the policy committee. Okay, so what, what I'm taking back from you is you're saying that's the only way to do it. That if I say make a motion in here, and Pam wants to second it, and because we only need three, and one other one wants to do it, that's not pop, that we can't make a policy that way. That's not a way to make no, a policy. No, you cannot make a policy. Okay, you have to have a policy. You have to have it, yes. 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 You have to have it written down. Yeah. Yes, okay, okay. There, yeah, that's the way to say it to you. You need to have it written down. It can't just be. And you can bring some information if you want to call back and find out the board. I'm gonna, I'm find out who's right. on the policy committee and give them the information. Well, I think Angie can direct this. Let Angie direct this. Okay. Just, just, we'll just give it to Ms. Okay. And, and then if I need to add it in as a survey, the policy yeah, for yeah, survey is fine. Then we'll work it out. That sounds good. I'm, I'm happy with that. Okay. I'm done. So, do we need a motion? No, no. Okay, you can sign Okay, personnel, Ms. Knight. Uh, during the closed session, I will be bringing you some uh, names for uh, teacher assistants. Teacher assistants. For the next school year. Okay. Okay, do I have a motion to go into closed session? I make a motion to go no, into closed session. No. Pursuant to the provision of North Carolina General Statute 143-3181.11, parentheses A, parentheses 3, and 143-318.11, parentheses C, I move the Grand County Board of Education go into closed session to receive advice from Ms. Ellen Davis, attorney for Grand County Schools of the Grand County Board of Education. Which comes within the review of the attorney client privilege. The advice will be general legal issue advice about legal issues and legal matters. Pursuant to the North Carolina General Statute 
318.11c, I move the Graham County Board of Education go into closed session for the purpose of considering personnel matters as defined in and allowed by the North Carolina General Statutes 143-318.11, parentheses A, parentheses 6, and the North Carolina General Statute 115C-321. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Any opposed? We are now in closed session. Yep. So, Jonathan made the motion to come back in closed in open session and yes. seconded by the student. That's right. And all in favor? Yes. All in favor? Yes. Uh, I've lost all the papers. You want me to say that? You have to make the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm ready. Okay. So, yeah, I would recommend that you employ the following four people for instructional substitutes for the FY24 school year next year. Erica Daniels, Kinsley Phillips, Haley Chris, and Christy Oakley. Do I have a motion to employ for fiscal year 24? The following teacher assistants, Erica Daniels, Kinsley Phillips, Haley Chris, and Christy Odom. Do I have a motion to employ these four young ladies? Yes, yeah, I make a motion to employ those four people. Okay, thank you. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Any opposed? Thank you very much. Anything else? Any announcements? Uh, yes, so the next meeting of the Board of Education will be a special call meeting on May 25th at 10 a.m. Ms. Knight, we can have our June meeting. Well, we won't need to have one the first week in June, but I may end up, depending on personnel and what who we hire, we may have to call another special call meeting, and then maybe we definitely will have one at the end of June. To, to clarify financial right. end of the year things. Okay. Um, <coughs> the other thing that I want to do while we're here for the benefit of Ms. Klein is there are some upcoming uh, events and we need to let our high school know the, uh, who will be in attendance. So the, uh, I believe the first event is May 16th, which is the... Um, the academic banquet. Yes. It's at six o'clock on a Tuesday. And so who plans to be there because we'll need to make appropriate singing oh, okay. and a meal count. So if you can be there, we need to know today. Not gonna go. Jim, you. And you're welcome yeah. to bring some. Carolyn's going to come. So, so, so two for you, okay? And then I've already talked to Hank and I've talked to Pam. Okay. For that. Pam's told me everything. Okay. Hank has to. Okay. So the next one is May 18th, Athletic Banquet. At six o'clock. I ain't sure on that. Okay. No, no, that's a, that's a Thursday. Thursday. Okay, and then the next one is back in work at May twenty fourth, and that's on a Wednesday at eight o'clock. Yeah. Does everybody get to get back to work? Yeah. On Wednesday the twenty fourth. Twenty fourth, and then graduation will be on Friday, May twenty sixth at eight o'clock. I do not know who's speaking. Can I ask you a question too? I'm not It's supposed on. to be me. No, I'm just kidding. Are they still going to be the athletic banquet at the football stadium? That is not I'm not sure. They do I'm it in the commons area because they feed. Well, they did one year. They did on the football field. Oh, COVID. Two years, two years, ago, two years ago, they did it. it. It went back last year inside. I would say inside again. And back at the commons area. How did they feed them on the football? Field? They literally pulled out grills and grilled hot dogs yeah, and hamburgers. They sure did. Yeah. We'll find out. Yeah, it's kind of people. So I believe it's inside. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. 
Yeah. 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 Y